Good day everyone! For today's video, we will be discussing some basic terminologies about circles. And we will also compute for the measurements of the radius and diameter of a circle. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started! Let us first define circle. A circle is a set of points equidistant from a fixed point called the center. We name points using capital letters, so I'll be using Q here, but you can use any letters from the alphabet. Now, let's give a name to this circle. Yes, just like you, circles have names too. So, we simply name a circle by its center. So, we will be using this symbol. So, we have here circle Q. Next, we take the distance from the fixed point or the center of the circle to any point on the circle. This line segment is what we call radius. But the plural form of radius, meaning if there is many radius, we call that radii. This line segment that passes through the center of the circle is what we call diameter. So in this figure, we have line segment AB as our diameter because it passes through the center of the circle. And then we have radii because we have two radius here. We have line segment QB and line segment QA. So as you can see, the measurement of our radius is actually half of the measurement of our diameter. So we will be discussing or we will be computing for the measurements of our radius and diameter later. Here are other terminologies that you will learn about circle. We have chord, tangent line, second line, and point of tangency. What do we mean by these terms? So first, let's draw a circle here. We have circle Q. And then, let's draw a straight line segment whose both endpoints lie on the circle. So we have here, we name this one GH or line segment GH. Line segment GH is what we call chord. A chord is a straight line segment whose both endpoints lie on the circle. You may also ask, how about diameter map? Can we consider it as a chord? Is a diameter a chord? The answer is yes. A diameter is a chord because both endpoints of the diameter lie on the circle. So let's proceed to the next terms. Let's draw first an external point I and point J. And then let's draw a line connecting these two points. You will notice that this line intersects our circle. This line IJ is what we call the tangent line. A tangent line is a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. Yes, exactly one point. And this point G, point G is what we call the point of tangency. Now let's go to another term. Let's draw a line that intersects the circle at exactly two points. This line is what we call the second line. So a second line is a line that intersects a circle in two points. So we call that one line L. But you can also use big letters or capital letters to name a second line. Now let us discuss a polygon which is circumscribed about the circle and a polygon which is inscribed in a circle. What is the difference between the two? But first, let us discuss circumscribe about a circle. So let's draw first a circle. So we have circle O here. Let us draw a polygon outside the circle. So this is actually a hexagon. So we name this one using six capital letters. So we have here hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F is circumscribed about a circle. So as you can see, if a polygon is circumscribed about a circle, all the sides are actually tangent to the circle, meaning each side of the polygon intersects the circle at exactly one point. So that's about a polygon which is circumscribed about a circle. Now let us go to a polygon which is inscribed in a circle. So let's draw first a circle here. We have circle P. And then let us draw a polygon inside 
the circle. So we have here a hexagon and we also name it using six capital letters. So we have here hexagon G H I J K L is inscribed in a circle. You will notice that the vertices of our polygon are actually points on the circle. So that's about a polygon which is inscribed in a circle. We have more terminologies to discuss. We have here concentric circles, disjoint circles, and intersecting circles. I know that you are familiar with these words, but let me just discuss each word. So let's begin with concentric circles. When we say concentric circles, these are circles with a common center point. And that common point is point O. So meaning we call all of this circle as circle O. Dartboard is a great example for a concentric. Now let's go to disjoint circles. Disjoint circles are circles which do not meet. Meaning circle A and circle B has no intersection. So that's disjoint circles. And intersecting circles is actually the opposite of disjoint, meaning we have two circles that intersect here. And that two circles, the intersection of that are two points. And you can actually create a chord that contains that two intersecting points. We are now down to the last discussion, which is measurement. So we will be finding the measurement of the radius and the diameter. So say for example here we have circle Q. Let's draw our diameter. Line segment AB. So it's given to be 10 centimeters. And our task is to find for the radius which is line segment QB. So as what I have said a while ago, the measurement of the radius is just half of the measurement of our diameter. Meaning if our diameter is 10 centimeters, we just have to get half of it, and then that's the length of our radius. So if line segment AB is equal to 10 centimeters, therefore line segment QB. QB is equal to 5 centimeters. Now, another example. What if our radius is given but we have to look for the diameter? So say for example, line segment QB is equal to 25 meters. And we have to find for the length of our diameter line segment AB. So just do the reverse way. If the radius is given, you just have to double it to get the length of the diameter. So double 25 meters. So we will get 50 meters. That's it. And then last example. The radius is given to be 3x plus 1 centimeters. What are we going to do? We also do the same. Let's double this one and you'll be able to get the length of your diameter. So we have here 3x plus 1 centimeters times 2. That's equal to 6x plus 2 centimeters. So that's all for today. We're done with the measurements and I hope you have learned about the measurements and some basic terminologies about circles. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to update you on my next videos.